Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown. This breakdown features none other than Aussie superstar Lachlan Giles. This breakdown was from his 2018 match against Heysom Raider. Um, in the breakdown, you will see how he changed his game up for the ADCC and also a little detail he picked up while we were breaking the match down. Um, guys, this breakdown um, is kind of sponsored by Lucky Gee. You can use a, a code of BB Breakdown 30 when you go to Lucky Gee and buy some of their super, super cool stuff. Um, also, if you go to BJJ Fanatics, you can use the code Lachlan10. And if you go to Grappler's Guide, you just use the code Lachlan and Lachlan gets a, a bit of a kickback from any purchases that you make. Um, I really hope that you enjoy this breakdown. This was a bit of a dream breakdown. There's another one coming, uh, not with Lachlan, but with another Aussie superstar, which is going to be absolutely incredible. Guys, if you want to keep up with the content, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Yeah, I got it. Yep. I love how. Um... They've told him to look at the camera and you to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a funny story about this one. Really? Go on. With the filming for it. Yeah, they had, um, I'm lucky it wasn't for me. Because <laughs> it's, in, it's in China. Wulin yeah. Feng, which I think is like a um, MMA you know, promotion. It was their first ever grappling one. But they want to they wanted promote the Chinese martial arts over there. Okay. Yeah. You know the the traditional like to get the the viewers engaged. I think they want to you know like wushu and things like that. Yeah, they don't want it to be like you know MMA is a separate thing with kickboxing. Okay. You know, so they so they made they basically gave Hai Sam a script. Lucky it wasn't for me. It was something to say essentially because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu comes from comes from Jiu Jitsu, which is from Japan, and Jiu Jitsu and martial arts in Japan came from China. So it's kind of like a Chinese martial art. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, <laughs> so um, this was a best of three, right? Yeah. Best of three submissions. Was this before or after the um, quintet? No, not quintet. It was the BJJ Fanatics. It? Yeah, it was before. This was uh, end of 20, 2018, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I, again, we got there and they still hadn't... They were kind of working out the rule set um, <laughs> even when I got there. And then they were like, best of three. And I was like, really? <laughs> best of three? <laughs> it's a monster. I thought, I thought that gave my opponent... Um, I was like, well, wouldn't it be like in their interest to injure you really badly? Yeah. You can't continue, but um, anyway. Especially uh, considering um, the heel hooks as well. I mean, we'll get we'll yeah. get. Into it. I've obviously seen this match um, a few times, but yeah, if you were that way inclined, definitely you just tear his heel off. L lucky he's not. You know, he was he was nice, but yeah, yeah like. Uh... All right. So, first thing I thought was. I knew he was big, but when he stood across the cage, he looked a lot bigger. <laughs> that was the first thing I, you know, I was thinking here. So, I th okay, first off was I wanted to, you know, if I saw an opportunity to, to go for a takedown, but it's obviously a little um, hesitant with, I'd seen he did a few, um, oh, sorry, when you said quintet, you're talking about Haisam doing quintet or yeah, me doing? Yeah, him. I saw, yeah, Haisam. Yeah, uh, Haisam had done, done the quintet. Yeah, he had before before this. So yeah, I had seen his um that he does a few jumping attacks as well, you know, like he would jump a triangle or, or um something of the sort. So I was I was wary of that. Um and I was also just just generally aware of he liked, you know, he, he had a few toe hold wins as well. Um, so he liked to go for toe holds, which I think was something that actually ended up working in my favor. Um, that's where 
I was a little hesitant not to overextend my hands um, in the standing position. Okay. Must have got poked in the eye there. No scratch. Okay. Uh, so I think I end up pulling single leg X um, a moment. And I tried to, I, I knew I wanted to get to his legs. Like that was a pretty obvious part of my strategy. So yeah, I thought in that scenario, he's pressuring forward. I could actually like fall right underneath. Um, but you've got someone who's very tall and it is hard to play single X against someone that tall. Yeah. Uh, if you, if we go back. As you get the single leg X, he uh, yeah. he pushes away the the inside position, the inside. Position. Yeah. But you, so when I do that, I end up either getting like S mounted or just squashed, sat on, and you do yeah. a, an awesome job of keeping him away. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Actually, let's. Um, so, so I've just got single. Leg. The issue against tall people is usually that if we look here, that right leg of mine, the, the one on the inside, mm -hmm. is a that's like a block to them going to mount. Like that knee blocks their hips from coming forward. Yeah, yeah exactly. But what happens when they're tall, if he stands tall, it's very hard to keep my hips that high that I can stay attached to there. Even even like I can't, my my left leg, my outside leg will be back healing, trying to like that almost like elevates my hips and the right leg remains a block. But I think you'll see him stand up in a moment and, and I'll kind of lose that tight connection that I've got right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, there. Okay, so now that, that knee's dropped below the line of the, of the hip. So here's, yeah, I'm trying to recover here. Ideally, actually, my, my favorite way at the moment anyway is to use my left leg as like a, like I hook underneath and block their hips. I think people are calling this like butterfly X or I don't know. Or like, it's kind of like you're doing a De La Hiva hook, but you're, so my left foot hooking in front of the, where, basically my, where my right hand is, ideally I'd be putting my left foot there to, okay. um, to push him away. But So right on your right hand side? Fully on your right hand. Yes. Yeah. So ideally, as soon as like a, my outside leg gets cleared, that left leg, I use uh, lately. I'm I'm hooking it underneath and in front of the hip. So, so as soon as it pops, into it's, there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But against someone taller, I'd probably almost go to that as a default these days. Yeah. So that's probably something I've adjusted a little bit. And would your knee be on the outside, almost like the the Musumichi footlock? position or would it go all yes the way yeah up? yeah knee on the outside yeah exactly on the outside. Perfect. um so yeah here though so i've got two things trying to prevent the um the mount here i'm keeping my right knee, even though he's cleared my knee i'm keeping it tight to the chest so i think so a this be to try to extend that leg to try to catch his far leg or something as, as soon as the knee comes away from the chest there's a gap that he can move into um, and the other one is the, the where I'm framing with my right hand, because I think you you want to frame. I don't want to open again. I don't want to open that space too much. So if I was to reach for his knee, which I think most people probably would uh, reach for the knee, which is which can be okay sometimes. But if you reach for their knee, it's very easy for them to pin that arm, and then they've cleared that arm. You know, so like. And I can't get it back, and there's a, then a gap between my shoulders and my and my knees that they can pass into. So having it like as close to the hip as possible is good, and it also creates the most distance. So if you imagine, if I was pushing, if I had my arm outstretched, I probably couldn't reach his knee right now. He would be able to move in closer if I was trying to reach to his knee. So he'd be able to get close the gap further. So by pushing the hip, it's kind of the the most distance making spot I can do right now in this immediate scenario. Yeah. And I think I'm probably going to try to use that as a frame to kind of turn to pivot my hips back towards I some here. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I once I got my knee in front again, that let me kind of turn that angle. He's gone for that again. You see when my right knee connects? Yeah. It, now it lets me kind of pivot. So, um, it's probably hard to see because he gets his 
um, in. But if I can connect my right knee, I can kind of push with it, and that's going to spin my head away. I can kind of push with it. Once, it. once it connects to his leg, you can see I'm kind of like pushing away, which helps me spin my body. Um, and I'm doing a big kind of axe kick with my left leg. Okay, so you're... Um you're you're uh framing there yep but you've got pressure here also yes and swing yeah, yeah swinging this leg around so that the head and that's all to try to like square me away you know he's you can see he's got an angle on me and i want to get back to the front on Now he's going back the other way. So they can, the other thing against tall people, you've got to watch the back step. So I've gone to outside Ashy, which I wouldn't do these days, but here we are. Why wouldn't you do it these days? Um, I think it's too risky for the back take. Like it, it's a, you, you can finish someone from there, but you can also, if someone's quite good at countering it, it's, I feel like personally the risk uh, doesn't outweigh the, Sorry, the risk outweighs the, the reward. So there's some good back takes. I'm not sure if Hassan plays the the leg game enough to at least at this point to, to be like savvy to the outside ashy kind of um, back takes when you're hiding your heel. But um so rather than going to an outside ashy, would you be going to an X guard or just staying on the single leg X or to be honest, now I would go so I actually would you know how I said I put my so I would be putting my left foot in front of the hip, so taking it out, looping it under, kind of like that Eva type position, but in front of the near hip. So I like just hooking on the on the other side, and I would probably right now be looking to go K guard fifty fifty. So okay. I'd shoot my left leg in front of that hip, and then my right leg can swing over like it is, but that'll chop me through, kind of like the entries I was doing at um at ADCC. So and you'd need the uh, you'd need the Bicep under scoop grip. Yeah, so I would underhook at some point there too. Probably not immediately. Probably once I've hooked my foot through, I would then change my right hand to the to the knee. Left hand can underhook and and attack the the fifty fifty entry there. Yeah, I feel like that's a safer uh, attack to go for. This this one, the outside actually. Even here, you can see I've got this big problem where my knees. Uh, like, because his legs so long, it's very hard to attach to the hip. You know, like they, you'll often hear you want to attach to the hip to get the sweep. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard to do. And, and it's poor leverage to try to sweep someone over when, when they're that tall and they're able to push down or this, you know, high sounds disconnecting my legs. But it is very difficult to off balance someone that tall yeah. from outside Ashley. I feel like um, once you've connected, and the issue is really this. Um, this right leg, um, so my right leg here, that I've taken now to the to the camera side of the body, but it's no longer as good of a frame. So having the shin in front was a good frame to keep distance, whereas now that the legs across, it's much harder to frame with that leg. So if someone starts to put you in bad position, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a leg drag. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Current thoughts on it. I mean, I said so, some. It doesn't mean you can't heel hook. You can definitely heel hook someone. So his arms backstepped off that, and I invert to to recover back, but he manages to free his foot um, due to the looseness of the position. So, all right. Just a, a sort of an opponent who's this tall. Is there anything that he's doing fundamentally wrong here that's setting you? You know, what are you looking for that's and I, I know that you go for the, the what we call like the idiot sweep, the inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, was that just to I know that a lot of the Danaher guys, because when Frank was over, um, he uses that to time the step. So he's like, I yeah. I'm rarely ever gonna get the sweep, but Yeah, yeah, I agree. Where the yeah. foot's going. So is that the same is that a similar sort of game plan to what you were thinking? Yeah, usually with that sweep, I'm, I'm, ex I'm hoping it. Well, if if it gets them over, that's good. And if I often just 
it kind of makes them not take a even stance. Cause I think keeping both legs far away is probably the worst case in terms of trying to get to their legs. So if I can make him stand in a staggered stance, um, one leg forward, then I feel like I've got a much better chance at, at attaching to a single leg X, which I was, you know, again, that was my, my strategy for this was shin to shin getting to you mostly using shin to shin to get to um, the legs. Although I, I also had a, I had seen he likes to do this kind of Toriander, which he does, and he's, he's successful with yeah. it. Um, but I, I like to try to, to snatch 50-50 as people do like a high hip Toriander. I like to try to spin underneath. Um, so I try, I think, I, I think that's actually why I got past because I kind of, I tried to counter him off that, but it didn't work. <laughs> I luckily got it later, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, the risk against a tall person, they're going to try to go around your legs a lot, I think. Whereas, you know, you can kind of expect that. And he can keep his legs very far away, but still reach with his hand. Oh, that was, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. So he stepped over my thigh. Mm hmm. Nice. And picked up my, kept me seated. Look at his left hand, keeping me from like dropping back. Cause I want to, I want to fall back and, and invert here to try to catch. 50-50, but he's caught my shoulder. That's that's uh, actually should analyze that more. That was a that's a good move. Yeah, yeah. So he's <laughs> got he's got just underneath your tricep, and he's pulling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's because I would right now. What I would like to do is spin my head right underneath, like into basically north south, but put uh -huh. my head down and let my right leg try to thread through for 50 50 yeah. Um, I basically do this kind of motion later in in a weird way, but um, yeah, um, that would be ideal in in this scenario. So, can we? Yeah, he waited for you to uh, reach out with that right arm, didn't he? Yeah. And then go straight to the... He actually tried to pick up my hand. It looks like he tried to catch my hand. And then mm -hmm. I kind of pulled that back, but he got my, my torso. Yeah. Hmm. That'd be good. I'll have to try that today. <laughs> That's not how it goes. Yeah. So he consolidates in side control. Luckily, it was submission only. So I was... Um, I can't even remember how they were going to score the rounds, but I don't, there definitely wasn't points. So I think he actually goes for a toe hold here. Oh no. Okay. However, he does the same thing in a moment and then switches to a toe hold as I bring my, my legs in. I would probably be nowadays I'd be fighting like as soon as I get a grip I'd probably be falling to my back looking for a cat like my strategy's really changed quite a lot since this match I'd be you know my, my aim was to use inside positioning here I'd probably be using a lot more of outside positioning um of my legs yeah for me that's the beauty of the K guard was that um everyone had been talking so much about oh you've got to control the inside position you've got to tr control the inside and the K yeah. guard sets up from the outside, and it, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a it's a good um, different approach to to use. Oh yeah, he jumped over. That's right. Yeah. Okay, we're almost in the same position here, but now see how I got to invert through, which let my leg uh, thread through there. So if we go back one moment. Um, sorry. It wasn't exactly the same part. So this is one of his jumping attacks that I had to be wary of. So I kept my knee up, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, actually, kind of like in a single leg X type position, to be honest. But I managed to thread my right leg through. So now this is almost 50-50 here. This is like, this is the position I would end up with when, it, when I get K guard and I'm shooting the, well, to, to some degree, like, like when I'm getting K guard and I'm shooting my leg through. Yeah. Um, but but because I was able to swing my head underneath that time, that's why I was able to, to invert. Kick his leg. It's interesting actually. I used my leg to kick him out just to try to stretch his legs apart a bit before I spin back. 
Um, and now I, I managed to catch the heel hook. So I actually don't have perfect, um, you can see I've actually got it a bit close to, like, in terms of my mechanics here, probably lucky he's got a big foot um, in the, I've got the, the heel at the elbow, which I, I tell people not to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Not, I guess uh, I should always say, you can make, the good thing about the inside heel hook is, like I usually teach people like all the, I would say are the ideal mechanics, but you can make like two or three mistakes and still finish an inside heel hook. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but if you're making too many mistakes, your, your chance of it slipping or, or losing it is too high. In, so in this scenario, his, his heel is pretty close to my elbow, um, which, and, and his toes are probably a bit high on my, my armpit for, for what I'd like. But if they've got a big heel, it doesn't matter so much. It's if they've got a, a small, you know, but it was a, if, if the situation was reversed, maybe I would slip out of high sums. Yeah. Um, heel hook, my leg being smaller and his, his arms being, and gaps being wider with a, with a grip like that. Um, now we're in this scenario where I've actually got my right foot stomping. You can see my right foot stomping on the hip. Mm -hmm. It's not until I get my bridge that I actually was able to, to finish. Maybe we go back. Oh, sorry, I was just talking about the hands first, but we'll go back and have a look at the, um, the finishing mechanics there. So if you just tell me when. Yeah, so you can see here, first off, the key moment was when I was able to stomp on the, the hip there with my right leg. Okay. So if you just go, just go back one or two frames, because my foot was actually off the hip okay. and high stump. And I've already got the heel hook, but it's, it's, it is hard to generate enough torque to finish if you're not bridging with your feet off them. Like I can, I can put some, some rotational pressure right now, but the bridge is not particularly strong. So once I knock, or once, once I some kind of goes to the ground to defend, I can't remember if I knocked him over or if he fell, um, he gets his hands in, which is uh, um, where it starts to become a bit risky. Like he's got a good chance at stripping the grip with the hands there. So you see my foot's still free. Mm -hmm. I think as the camera changes angle, I've, I've just got the bite now, I my hands, but now I've stepped on the hip as well. And this is as his hands start coming into fight. Okay. Um, the, so I, I generally think if I'm stepping on my opponent's hip and bridging, it'll usually overpower their ability to fight with their hands. So obviously, Hassan's a lot stronger than me, but I'm using my whole body with that bridge, stepping off um, his body, and that's going to be a pretty powerful fight. Whereas without that foot there, my hand, it's basically my hands against his hands. I would probably lose that battle. In fact, I might... In the next hit, I think I, tr I got the same position, but not with my foot on the hip, and I, I wasn't able to finish, and I, I changed to outside Ashy and, and went to, to finish from there. So you can see, if you look at that, see, when I, when I say the rotation, now that's actually, t when I rotate him here, I put some rotation pressure on the, the heel. It's starting to turn his knee more side onto my, my hip. So when I bridge, it's, it's going to affect the, the side of the knee a little more here. Yeah, now I've got my hands connected, feet are on the hips. I start to bring my hips in. Yeah. And obviously got the, the tap with that. And you can see that kind of broke through the, the power of his grips. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then we had to fight again. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. I was pretty happy with that. I was like, okay, I'll go, I'll, you know. There. Um, yeah, I have to actually be careful not to get counter heel hooked here. If he had a set back for my heel, I'd probably do it a bit differently now. Yeah, all of 2019 was inside heel hooks. I basically abandoned the. Uh -huh. It was pretty shortly after this I stopped playing outside Ashy. <laughs> not that, not that I again, people have, well. Occasionally, people have misquoted me that, uh, into saying that outside heel hooks don't work. That's definitely not what I've said. I just said I just don't prefer it. I don't prefer to go to the outside ashy or the outside heel hook. If I have an opportunity, I will, I will, um, I will feed the leg across to the inside and chase an inside heel hook. 
So I think I wanted to try to wrestle, but he had a very good sprawl. So I, <laughs> I bailed on that. Um, and so here I am framing to recover guard. And I think he went for his own leg lock there, which was good for me. I gripped the, you know. When he goes for the, when he goes for your legs. Um, yeah. And obviously you've got the confidence of being a, a more dominant leg locker. What, what's the thought when somebody goes for your legs and you're just like, this isn't going to work for you? Is there, is there something that happens or is it just a confidence? I, think I, I, still, I was still, I mean, obviously I, I was still, um, you have to respect, you know, like he could definitely, um, if he gets the right position, could, could do some damage and, and win the match with a leg lock. So I wanted to make my, my knee stay tight to my chest. I think when he sat over, my knee was free. So I was very comfortable now because my knees were, were lower than his hips. So I think if you, if you go back again, just watch that just play that through you'll see i tried to keep my as he went to sit over i really tried to keep my knee tight to the chest because if he sits over and he's just got my shins and foot trapped i'm not too worried about a toe hold um but if my, if my whole knee gets collected yeah here we are so yeah so it's it's closing that space there right um yeah i mean i was aware that that would might be something he looked to do so i kind of i think i probably sensed it it's closing this space. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've got my left my arms framing it and that allows my legs to come back in and and close that distance. Yeah, there we are. So there's one and then the other comes in. Yeah, so now that I'm behind the hips, I'm I'm pretty pretty comfortable to to try to actually I think I wanted to pull his leg across and, and kind of force a leg entanglement again, but Yeah, so back to hand fighting. So I tried to spin under the 50-50 there, but he actually turned the other way. And it looks like I'll get I'll get there, but the, the long way. So this is that kind of um, invert I was talking about. It didn't quite look how I said, but this gap for his hips here. Yeah. See how his hips are high? What I want to do is bring my right leg through that gap. So I'm, I'm using my knee to kind of bump him forward, but I want my foot to shoot through that. Yeah, you, your foot's going to go through there. Yeah. So, so if you compare that to before when, when he held my arm and I couldn't bring my head underneath, now I've actually got my head um, through, which is, which is going to make it a lot easier to, to work towards. But he actually... So that's normally, if, if he was to stay where he was, my aim would be to swing my right leg through. But he actually steps his left leg over. So I end up in, I think I end up in 50-50 eventually, but it's kind of a weird, it's not how I would like, I guess it doesn't look how I would teach it to people. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Over And now my right, okay, so now I'm in 50-50 kind of, a, and straight on the heel here. But this time, I don't think I've got my foot on the hip. He's locked my... My right foot is not in that position to be able to, to bridge. My left foot's over, but oh no, it is. Okay. What what did I feel here? Maybe he let's see, let's see what happens. Sorry, I can't even remember what, what happened in this match. So you've got your you've got the the heel. Agree. Yeah. And then yeah, your foot's sort of on his center line. Yeah. So that's I think that's fine for my leg position. I think I don't have a great bite of the heel here. I'm really not like, yeah, go back. I think my elbow was really a bit high. I want, I want my elbow like locked into my side. So it's, it's like I've caught his heel with my forearm there, mm -hmm. but I haven't locked it. You can see how open my elbow is. That's actually where he slipped it. He used his foot to. I'm going to say, my... is he using his foot here to lift your yeah. yeah he's lifted my elbow even further and that's um that's slipped his his foot let's just go back a couple of um, um, one second and he's also stripped my hands from connecting so yeah my quite open i think like you can see his toes are not really 
caught well at all. It looks like they're, his toes are right in my armpit and not, not locked in by my side. So I think I get it. I'm, I'm kind of looking at how I would be doing it differently, you know, now compared to then. And I think I, I would probably be getting a slightly better bite first. I probably looked for the finish a little too eagerly without making sure my grip was, was tight. Um, and I think that's, that's a mistake that I think I corrected. I, I, 2019, I, I think I made some huge, this is 2018 and 2019, I, I kind of made some adjustments to my leg game. And that was one of the issues I'd had in the past is, you know, for, for a few years I had, I had been doing heel hooks and I would catch, I would like catch a heel hook in a competition. And as I went to like bridge or apply pressure, it would slip. And that pretty much didn't happen in 2019. I think it was just like taking the time to, to get a really good bite before you worry about putting the pressure on second. And as I said in the previous one, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't have to have every single um, part of it, you know, ticked off, but it needs to be like tight enough that, you know, when you put that pressure on or if someone's like pulling on your hands or trying to kick your elbow, that it's not going to, it's not going to slip. And then you can apply bridge second to that. Um, yeah. So then I, Again, something I probably wouldn't do now is I took the the foot to the other side. So if I could say now, what I would try to do as he's coming up to standing is invert underneath. And that will expose the heel again on the invert. Yeah. Um, I've actually taken the leg to the other side, which which worked well for me. But again, I, I feel like that would be a riskier thing to do these days. So I've taken the leg to the other side and I go outside heel hook. Yeah, and he tapped straight off. Yeah. This is a good uh, angle, actually. Good angle, yeah. So I get the bike connect my, oh, here's my terrible shot. It's <laughs> <laughs> not getting underneath of that. Anyway. Yeah, we'll keep going. Yeah, so. It's a good one to look at. It's um, um, you can kind of see that that was, I think, like a good, a good match, which was in the transition period from going for like the traditional leg locking positions into the fifty-fifty. Like I was kind of starting to to play more fifty-fifty, but I hadn't maybe uh, fully focused on it as much as I as I had, you know, a few months. You know, I think probably from that point onwards. For the next like six months was was like a huge um, part of development and and working that K guard and uh, I think six months later I had the the game that like the the outline of the game that you saw at at ADCC. Yeah. Um, do you have any Do you have anything else coming up? Right now, it's some yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know when we're. Um, going to be open to international travel. So I, I think that'll probably be the, later in the year, you know, like towards the end of the year. But, um, I've got, I mean, ADCC 2021 is the main aim. So I'll be mostly, you know, working away at my prep for that um, and try and do some, some uh, competitions in the lead up to that. I think we'll, you know, we'll hey, be the, be doing all just the are you going to be doing all of your training in Australia or traveling? Or? Pretty much. I mean, I'll try. I'll probably try to go get on a few seminar tours, or if I compete, do some seminars um, in and around that. But otherwise, yeah, you know, mostly in Australia. 